this in the next couple of videos. I'm going to use the Rubik's Cube and show how it is going to be an example of the puzzles that we've been doing, even though on the surface it doesn't seem like it. When you look at a Rubik's Cube, we have these various moves. Really, at any time, there's six moves you can do on a Rubik's Cube. You could turn any of the six faces, and uh, each move, like this move, uh, this red move clockwise, uh, has a inverse move, moving the red counterclockwise. Or the green face can go clockwise or counterclockwise. Or the yellow face can go clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, these other faces can go clockwise or counterclockwise. You can actually look at those faces by rotating left and right. The blue face all the way in the back can go clockwise or counterclockwise. The yellow face on the bottom can go clockwise or counterclockwise. And I, I have this, this extra move, this seventh move. This move moves the um, the middle layer. It goes um, depending on how you're, which side you're looking at it from. That's sort of uh, counterclockwise from the top. And that would be clockwise from the top. Anyway, those are the moves of the Rubik's cube. So often we, um, because we don't always necessarily have. Uh, the green in the front or the red in the front, but when we make up algorithms for solving the Rubik's Cube, uh, we usually don't talk about what color face we're moving because the move will be the same if a different color is in front and I want to do something else like that. So usually we pick a face to be the front face. In this case I'm going to call green front and the white face is, is on top. And when that happens, uh, we can call the faces like F for front clockwise or F inverse for counterclockwise. Uh, the red face would be described with the letter R. And this orange face is described by the letter L. So we have front, right. Uh, often we call the top face either T or U. And the back face B. And the bottom face, because we have a B for back, we usually call the bottom face D for down. That's why we can call the top face U instead of uh, T. This middle layer slice actually has a name also. I think they call it E. Anyway, those are the legal moves, so there aren't really that many of them. Now when you look at this, it has something in common with the puzzles that we've been doing. And to really show you how the Rubik's Cube is an example of the puzzles we've been doing, the flat puzzles we've been doing, I want you to open up puzzle number 15. 15 is the puzzle I thought of. To really, this whole video series and app is basically um, based on this idea I had for puzzle 15. Here, down here, I have a grid with 27 numbers in it. Up here I have the Rubik's Cube, but this Rubik's Cube is not with colors on it, but it's got numbers on each of the cubes. And see here this cube number 9? It has a 9 on all three faces, so uh, it doesn't have different colors like a regular Rubik's Cube has three different colors on this face, but this is just cube number 9. And an easier challenge than the actual colored Rubik's Cube is to try to solve this number cube where uh, we wouldn't know if this cube really has the right sticker on top because any of these three nines could be on top, but it will still, it is uh, the first sort of challenge that we're going to learn how to do. So, the way we make movements on this cube is if I push the number five on here, if I think of this as one of these flat two dimensional puzzles with a three by nine, uh, three by nine with 27 squares in it. If I push the number five, you'll see that it does a uh, a one three nine seven and a two six eight four two four cycles. Take a look at just the two by uh, at the flat part. But as you can see, it seems so mysterious. How is that happening? Well, it actually does happen because if you look at the Rubik's cube itself, every time I push number five, the top face moves, and you can see how the 1 goes into position 3 and the 3 goes to position 9 and the 9 goes to position 7. So this is just an arbitrary thing where 1 goes to 3, 3 goes to 9, 9 goes to 7, 7 goes to 1, and 2 goes to 6, 6 goes to 8, 8 goes to 4, 4 goes to 2. 
but it's actually based on what happens when you actually move a Rubik's Cube. And any of these green faces, we can push like uh, the 17, you can see the front face, one, two, three, four, and the 15 here, it makes the flat puzzle look kind of funny about what's happening, but when you look at the cube itself, it actually makes sense what's going on. And 23 is the face on the bottom. So that's why the Rubik's Cube is, um, is an example of the puzzle we've been doing. We have a limited number of moves, namely six of them, and they're inverses. I, I don't have counterclockwise here, but you could, if you do a move, you can undo it by doing it three times. So we have six moves and they're inverse. And we have this, uh, and, and to fix the cube, you know, it's really hard. Here I'm going to mix the cube up. And you'll see it's going to mix up the numbers on the bottom also. Okay. Well, now it's a big mess. Now, a couple of things I want you to notice. Those green numbers have not moved at all. And that's because on a Rubik's Cube, any of the six moves actually does not change that middle. Like the number five here stays the number five because when you move the top face of a Rubik's Cube, the center, the center uh, square there, the center cubes there don't, don't move. Another thing I want you to notice is that some things are red and some things are blue. Because in a Rubik's Cube, there are actually four kinds of cubes. There's cubes that have one sticker on them. That's like the, the number five, the 11, the ones that are green. The ones that are blue are edge cubes, and they have only two stickers on them. And no matter what you do, like 16 and 18 are edges, when you make a move, an edge goes to the spot of another edge. And the red ones, like the 19, it has three stickers on it. Those are called corner cubes. There are 12 edges. There are eight corner cubes. And when you make a move on the Rubik's Cube, corners stay as corners. Uh, you can see I accidentally pushed on number 19. Well, that's because I've made it so we can do a very, this cube is very hard to solve using just the six moves. So I've made it a little bit easier by allowing you to click on any three reds. And it will do a series of moves that are going to be mysterious for now, but it will put the 19 in position, it will put the thing here, which is in position nine, into position three, and the thing in position three into here, which is position seven. And it won't mess up any of the other numbers, which seems like a really difficult thing to do if I can only use the green moves. But using the red moves, if I click three of them, I click on them, and the cube does something mysterious, which is part of this video to explain what it's doing. Same thing happens if I <clears throat> click on three blue ones, if I click on the 18, the 6, and the 20, and the 8, let's say, the 18 is going to go where the 6 is, the 6 is going to go where the 8 is, the 8 is going to go where the 18 is on this flat puzzle, kind of like on puzzle number 2 we did with the three cycles. But it's actually going to do something pretty complicated because up here, watch the cube, it's going to do this mysterious series of about... Uh, 10 or 15 moves, which is the goal of one of the later videos to learn how that works. But a fun thing to do now is to use three cycles on this puzzle. You could either cycle any three reds or any three blues, and the greens don't need to be cycled. So I want to put one into this position, and 25 wants to go over here. I usually use the greens as like a guide to where these things want to be. And the Rubik's Cube up there is doing its thing. This thing that you're going to learn how to do in this video. I like to do all the corners first. So, um, actually, th this video is all about the corners. So 3 wants to go here, and 19 wants to go uh, 17, 18, 19. And the 7 wants to go here, and the 9 wants to go there. So now I have the, the four corners on the top face fixed, and they're in the right place. <clears throat> now I like the bottom. The 19 is in the right place, but the, uh, and the 25 is also in the right place. So I'm glad this happened because 
it's a little bit annoying, but it could happen. Hopefully just one thing's in its right place, then you could do a three cycle to fix it. But here I have two things in their right place, the 19 and the 25. And I can't just do swap two things with a three cycle. So when that happens, I want you to use the green, the 23, get it so just one thing is in its right place. So if I do this, now I have um, the 27's in the right place only. And now I can cycle the 19 to where he wants to go and the 25 wants to go where the 21 is. So now all the corners are fixed. Uh, in the next video, we're going to look at what happens when the um, when the edges, how to deal with the edges. I think I'm going to go back and now look at puzzle 16. Now 16 is similar. It's got the all these numbers here. This Rubik's cube doesn't have any numbers on it; it's all colors. Watch what happens when I mix this. Okay, now not only have all the numbers gotten mixed around, but the um, some of the numbers are like upside down, like the 26 year. Some of the numbers are like rotated, uh, rotated 120 degrees. Some are rotated 240 degrees. It's kind of you know confusing what's what what's going on here. Well, these even though these don't have numbers on them anymore, every cube does have a location. So I'm actually gonna do the three cycles and just see what happens. So one wants to go to position 25, well, where the 25 is, and the 25 wants to be over here. The 3 wants to go here, and the 9 wants to go there. The 7 wants to go here, and the 19, well, the 19 actually wanted to go where the 7 was, so I can only really fix uh, one thing at this time. I'll throw the 19 over there. Now I have the top four corners in place, although it looks funny because they don't all have white stickers on top, but we'll get to that. I look on the bottom, uh, the 25 and the 27 are in their right place, and these are... We want to, having two in the right place is actually, we'd rather just have one thing in the right place because we can't swap just two things. We can't do these three swaps. So I'm going to push 23. Now I have the 21 in its right spot and the 19, 25, and 27 are wrong. So I'll put 19 into this position and the 25 to that. And now the eight red numbers are in their right place. But it doesn't look that solved this Rubik's Cube. They don't look like they're in the right place. And that's because some of the cubes aren't what's called oriented properly. Like this cube number seven, which is up here, it should have a white sticker on top. Well, we can tell because it's not right side up. So if you push on this button right here, it allows me to flip two corners. So I push the red, and the first one, you see how this A has a, its bottom is in the top right. So I want to first click one that where the bottom of the number is in the top right. And then I want to see how the B has the bottom of the number in the bottom left. So I want to locate a number like that, like this 27. I click on those. It's going to do a different mysterious pattern, but that pattern will orient those two cubes properly, as you'll see in a second. Here's this thing again, and I want to find something with the bottom of it in the top right, so that like, this 3 is like that. And then one where the bottom's in the top left. I actually don't have one like that, so I'm just going to take one of the other ones because I don't have a choice. I have to do two things. Now I can go one last time. So I want to first pick one where the bottom of the number is in the top right corner, and the other one said so this 25 and 21 do that. And this is the goal for this video. You'll learn how to do this on an actual Rubik's Cube uh, with some patterns well developed. But if you take a look at this, you'll see that the cube is looking, after these moves are done, the cube is looking almost, well, 
it's actually more than halfway, uh, well, it's not half, it's about halfway solved. In other words, the four, um, the four corners are all correct, and you can see that the white is together with the white face, and these greens are all fixed up, and these greens, you kind of have a checkerboard on each of the faces that's correct, and that's pretty good, because that means all that's left are the uh, 12 edges. Uh, there are 27 cubes in a Rubik's Cube, including the one in the center that we don't see. So we have 15 cubes in there. Uh, we have, yeah, we, we, the six centers are always right. And the one in the very center is correct, and then the other eight. So the cube is more than halfway done. I'm going to recommend that you mess around with puzzle uh, 15, which is this one, just to get a feel for the three cycles, and puzzle 16, which is the three cycles uh, of three cycles of the corners uh, and the um, orienting two corners at a time. So mess around with that puzzle for a bit just to get a feel because that's what we're going to be doing when we eventually solve the Ruby's Cube. But for now, mess around with those two for a while. The purpose of this video is to teach you uh, and actually have you figure out in a way how to cycle three corner pieces of the Rubik's Cube. Again, any of these red ones are officially corner pieces. They have three stickers on them. And, well, if I push 9, 27, 25, we can see that the cube does somewhat mysterious eight-move pattern, which causes the 9 went from here to where the 27 was, 27 went to where the 25 was, and the 20 five went to where the nine was. You can see that down here also. The nine's here now. 27 is in the position where the 25 goes. So you could imagine that it's pretty useful to be able to do that without messing up anything else in the in the cube. And I'm going to take you through that with puzzle number 17 first. Now uh, I'm also going to show you this on an actual Rubik's Cube because uh, you can you can practice these movements even if you have a Rub and any Rubik's Cube, you get some sticky notes. I'll show you how to do that in a second. But for now, the goal is to use three moves to try to get this 27 cube into this bottom position over here in between next to the 26. And it doesn't matter what happens to any of these gray cubes, although we don't want to mess with the bottom layer at all. Those have to stay in place. But can you get the 27 to the to its position down here without messing up the bottom at all. Again, whatever happens to the top doesn't matter. Uh, any of these gray cubes, that's why I made them gray. So you should push pause and mess with that. And then when you come back, I'll show you what the three moves are. Welcome back. So the three moves are, I'm gonna get this, the thing, 27 wants to go here, but if I move it in there like that, kind of messes up the other stuff. So instead, I'm going to do the 15 side clockwise. Now, the 27 wants to go here. Well, I can do that pretty easily, moving the 5 clockwise. And then, when I move the 15 counterclockwise, it's all in place. So you should practice those three moves. I'll show you them on the on the regular cube also. Also, it's worthwhile to say, what if I want to move the 27 back where, where it was? Well, I can do that by doing those uh, three moves in reverse. So instead of doing uh, 15, 5, 15 inverse, I'll do 15, 5 inverse. 15 inverse. So it's worthwhile on a real cube, and I'll show you that in a second, but just to examine those three, that three move pattern is so important. Again, it was uh, 15, 5, 15 inverse. You could actually say redo, 15, 5, 15 inverse, redo. 15, 5, and I hope you're not just trying to memorize those streams, but you could really see how that worked. Now I'll show you some on an actual cube. Now 
Now, puzzle number 19 is one of the most important puzzles in the entire app. In this one, my whole cube is all fixed up with the exception of three. Cube number 27 wants to go here where the 25 is, 25 wants to go where the 9 is, and 9 wants to go where the 27 is. Now, I'm going to compare this to puzzle number 11. Because number 11 also has three things. This is kind of like the 27 up here, and this is, you know, he wants to go here, and he wants to go here. So this is a lot like that puzzle. You might remember that this one worked like this. The first move got the 16 to where he wanted to be. Um, it didn't mess up the bottom at all, but it wreaked havoc with all the other pieces. Then we did this move, because before we moved, we don't want to move the 16 back. We want to move the 4 back to where the 16 came from. So I put the 4 where the 16 is. And then when I undo move A, the 4 goes back where the 16 is. The 13 came from wherever he was to this, to this spot. And then when I undo B inverse, I, did a, I, I do a 3 cycle that way. So let's now compare this to puzzle number 19. Okay, so watch the way this works. It starts, 27 wants to go in this place where the 25 is. So I do the same three moves. Oh, you should mess around with this yourself first, but this is also one you can watch the video because it's, it's pretty hard the first time you see this. It's more, you can still learn it and it still won't count as any kind of cheating to learn it from this video. So check it out. By going 15, 5, 15 inverse. So a couple of things have happened. For one thing, the whole top is all messed up. First top two layers are destroyed. That's bad. But what's good is that the bottom hasn't changed very much. The only thing that happened in the bottom is that the 27 ended up where he wanted to be. 25 got thrown all the way over here. So it seems like a big mess. If I undo those three moves right now, 15, 5 inverse, whoops, well, that just gets me back where I was, so that's not good. But if I do, again, 15, 5, 15 inverse, I don't want to send the 27 back where he came from. I want to send the 9 back where the 27 came from. Also, I want to get the 25 where the 9 is. So by doing this other move, and this is going to be basically a conjugation, by moving the bottom layer, which is number 23, and I want to move it clockwise, now the 9's where the 27 just was. So now if I undo those other moves, the 9's going to go back where the 27 came from, which is exactly where uh, the 9 wants to be. Not only that, but the 25, which came from, it came from here, but it's going to get sent back to where the 9 is, and that's great because the 25 does want to want to go where the 9 was. So I'm going to undo those three moves. I'm going to do that first three move thing, but backwards, which is 15, 5 inverse, 15 inverse. Now the 25 has been sent where the 27 was, but remember there was that move where I moved the 9 into that spot. So now I just undo that by doing 23. And I've done it. And I could actually do it for any, um, any three. It, it, it's ideal if one piece is on top and two corners are on the bottom. But like, I don't know, for instance, if I want to swap these, th these things around, um, oh, and, and that, that sequence that I just showed you did have the form of a commutator. The, um, the, the 15, 5, 15 inverse is kind of like A. The, the 23 is kind of like B. Then the A inverse is when I did 15, 5 inverse, 15 inverse. And then the B inverse was like the 23 uh, counterclockwise. Anyway, imagine that the um, 9 was up here and I wanted to swap these three around. Well, I would do the same thing. I would first put the 9 into this spot, then do the 15, 5, 15 inverse, then bring the, uh, the 25 under there, undo that with 15, 5 inverse, 15, then undo my B move, and then there was the setup move. My, my, my very first move was I did a, uh, uh, my first move was a 5 inverse, so I finished it up with a five, and now I've rotated, did a three cycle on these three. So I'll show you more with an actual Rubik's Cube, 
but you should practice that. Practice moving these three cubes around. Then think about what if it's another three cubes? Maybe I can do some conjugates by setting up, maybe moving the three things that want to get moved into these three positions. Anyway, I'll show you it on a real Rubik's Cube now also. And I do recommend you get a real Rubik's Cube because uh, there's something about doing it for real as opposed to on an app that makes it, uh, it helps you learn it a lot better. So on the actual Rubik's Cube here, you can see um, I've got the three pieces. I put little stickers on them. And we can see I'm trying to put the two into where the three is, the three to where... Um, and the three to where the one is. So when I do the R, U, R minus move, now I've got the two in the right place. Three's been sent kind of up in the left corner there. So now I move the one to where the two is. And now I undo those move with R, U minus, R minus. And now you can see that everything is there, all set, all fixed. Now there are other configurations like over here, maybe I want to, um, I have the one, the one, the two, and the three, but see how the three is kind of in a different spot. So that means when I do those first three moves, I now need to move the bottom layer twice to get the three kind of where the two was. So it's a little bit of a second B move. Now I undo the A and now when I undo the B, I have to move that one twice also. And that causes sort of another three swaps. So you can do other, all kinds of three swaps uh, by sort of messing around, maybe having a different B move. Instead of moving D, you move it twice. Now I'm going to take a scrambled cube and I'm going to put little stickers on. I'll put a white, on the white, blue, orange, I'll put a number one. And on the white, blue, uh, and on the white, blue, red, I'll put a little two. And on the white, green, orange, I'll put a three. And the white, red, orange, I'll put a four. And the yellow, blue, red, I'll put a 5. And the yellow, blue, orange, I'll put a 6. And the yellow, green, red, I'll put a 7. And the yellow, green, orange, I'll put an 8. And I'm going to try to get the 8 corners into their proper place. I'll start with the number 1, which has a white sticker on it, goes on top. Now the white's on the top face. And I'll just move the cube so that it's in the top left corner of the top face. Look for the 2. There it is. Two moves, we'll get it next to the white into position two. Now I want to put a three on the bottom left part of that. So that's going to take, I have to, I have to look for it. And there it is. Actually, the four is in place also. I'm going to pretend the four wasn't in place. So to get the four in place is a little tricky. See, I can move the four under the, where it wants to go. And then if I move the right face up, the four goes in place. But it's going to mess up the two that was already there. So what I do instead is I move the two out of the way. And then move the four in and then move everything back. Now I turn it over and I want to have five, six, seven, eight. But what I see is I have the five. The five's, I can move the five, so he's in the right place. But the seven wants to go where the six is, and the six wants to go. Uh, six wants to go where the seven is. And seven wants to go where the eight is. So this is actually an example of the eight move pattern that we did before. I needed to do a three swap, which I'm doing right now. And when I do the last move, I now have uh, everything in place. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This gets us ready for the next stage.